Welcome back to week three of Striper Season Updates with On The Water. I'm Matt Hefner, and over the next 11 weeks, we'll be bouncing around the Striper Coast following different bites as the fish migrate north. We'll talk to all sorts of credible Striper fishing sources from Jersey to Maine to give you the scoop on how the bite changes over the coming months. Last week, I was joined by John Oswald, author of the weekly North Jersey Fishing Report here at On The Water. John and I talked about 30 plus inch stripers hitting Jersey's backwaters in force, the hot bite on flutter spoons around Raritan Bay, and big holdovers around smaller local river maps. Today is April 15th, the opening day of striper season for New York anglers south of the George Washington Bridge. Although there's been plenty of catch and release going on here for weeks now, the bite is hot from New Jersey to Western Long Island, with plenty of reports of migratory fish in the mid 30s up to 40 inch range. This week, I'm going to let the bite really heat up around my hometown and skip on up to Martha's Vineyard, where I'm talking to Captain Stavros Vigles. You can just say Stavros, yeah. So Stavros, with all this action just south of us in New York and New Jersey, what's typically expected of striper fishing for you guys in terms of, you know, this time of year in Martha's Vineyard? Um, because I know it's mostly been holdovers. So do you guys, like, when do you start to see that first, pu first push of schoolies? Typically around the 14th. Um, like most fishermen, we look for the dandelions, we look for the osprey. But for us here on the vineyard, I can actually attest for, we look for the first opening of one of the gray ponds. Because once the pond opens, we know there will be fish on the outside. Um, the holdovers are very active right now. You know, you're really casting small stuff, kind of like this little Joe Bags. Yeah, little Joe Bag sand eel. And then, uh, you know, I, I usually use my coops. Uh, you can see this one's kind of worn. Uh, my, you know, coop makes these uh, ounce and a half, two ounce with the little leather on the back. Um, I've gotten my first striper of the year many times on this. Uh, you go down to Kwon or, you know, one of the great pond openings. And you just keep hitting it, you know, uh, sunrise, sunset. Um, I know people that are going every day, every night, you know, you just got to keep going until you get them. And usually, you know, one person gets one and then it might, that might be in the morning. It might be at night, but the next day it's usually pretty good. So that's what we're looking for. But, um, despite the great weather and everything, it's, um, I haven't seen too much life aside from the holdover aspect. Some good holdovers. My biggest holdover so far is about uh, 23 pounds. And I was going to actually say, I saw your Instagram recently. Was that the fish you were referring to? Yes. Yep. That was a beautiful fish, man. Thank you. Yeah, we, 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 uh, we've we gotten a couple like that. I had fish last night. Um, uh, they were uh, short and fat, but, you know, there was a few around. You know, some other guys fishing some other spots and some of the great ponds that have been doing really well. And so when you fish, when you fish those ponds, do you usually fish right at the mouth of them or do you kind of try to, you know, meander and wade around them a little bit? Well, we um, try to find a point where there's a deep drop off. Usually it, um, this time of year, depending on the water level, um, you might want to be further inside the pond, you know, closer, like um, further away from the beach. Usually that's where they're all, you know, holding up. And then, you know, point, you, you know, travel from point to point real nice and slow the perch will bite um right as the sun's going down so will the bass so you know most guys are bringing a little perch rod and a bass rod and that's what's going on right now but it's definitely time to start searching i know that there's this full moon tide coming up on i think the 16th or 17th or whatever it might be sometime around then um, and that's really a, a lot of people are hoping and, and I think it's probably going to happen is that a lot of bunker are going to get pushed north with that big full moon tide. Um, I know they're already in the western Long Island Sound and they're pushing east, you know, on the south shore of Long Island. So it's just a matter of time until they start getting up into the Connecticut, Rhode Island area. And then, you know, right away they'll be hitting you first and then bumping right into the Cape afterwards. And so um, I, I think it's, it's going to be a really great start to the season once this uh, this tide hits. Exactly. Yes. I, I was actually predicting the 14th for, you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, first fish being caught in the vineyard, the, um, with, with sea lights, but it might be a couple of days later, but I think Saturday for sure. I already told my wife I'm fishing Saturday now, but you want, you want me to give you guys some, um, holdover techniques real quick or? Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Man. All right. So aside from, you know, the daytime, 
you know, use something small, white, little gel bags, slowly on the bottom. Anything after sunset, you're going to want something black. The sluggo, just crawl this on the bottom. You know, you know, switch it up and it'll work its way down. But, this is what I've been using. Oh, I shouldn't show you guys this, but. This little gel bags right here. It's a little, little green. With the Avut rod. Stratic 5000. Oh my gosh, so much fun on 20 pound test. Oh, especially, you know, when you catch, you know, 20 pound bass. It's the best. But it's this time of year, it's slow. Very slow. Then, when you start to search for... You know, fresh schoolies, fish with lice on the outside. That's when you want to start switching to this. And you can still use small stuff like this. But don't be afraid to throw the storm sheds, anything larger. Do you use, uh, sorry to interrupt you, do you use trailers? Like, so I, I almost always use a trailer like this on the curly eel tail or fat cow jig strip or something. Yeah, no, yeah, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, something like this, you would take a Ronzi tail or any tail that you would, that you prefer, you know, hook it up, then that, that really helps. It adds a little weight, um, makes a swim better, it, you know, it, it, it definitely can't hurt. I always do that. It never hurts to also put on a, um, I don't know if I have any, oh yeah, here you go, a little pork grind. Oh, you still have some of those, huh? I do. I'm afraid to open this, but I might. Ooh. John Oswald and I were talking about that in last week's episode, and we were talking about how, how bad they would smell if there was still a jar laying around it. Well, this, this can't be too old because it uh, this is a uh, fat cow. But yes, no, these things work. It's, it's, it's just the way they flow and something extra. Actually, I ha had these out because I was thinking about putting them on the the bucktail instead of the Ronzi. Yeah, that's what I use. I use a uh, fat cow jig strips, or this is actually a different brand. It's a, it's, I think it's a brand. I don't know if it's called this, but it's called Otter Tail. No, I think I got some of those in my bad fish box not too long ago. So, like, what do you do to prepare in the weeks or days prior to migratory fish arriving on Martha's Vineyard? Oh man, um, I feel like you're always preparing for. You know, the next season, whether you're putting the tuna gear away, sending stuff away, you know, I just sent a bunch of reels back to get serviced. But I always keep, you know, a couple of reels on, on deck, you know. Um, but um, spend a lot of time in the basement and, uh, you know, make sure you have all your bucktails, everything ready to go. You know, you're patching your waders, getting new waders, get your boots going. I mean, I already, you know, I got my bag, my bag ready, got all my bucktails and everything in it, pliers. Oh, this little thing's great, by the way. If you put your finger in here, put the hook on there. I don't know what it's called, but, well, the easy hooker. I've had it since I was a kid. Got that down in the keys. But the fun thing is, for for this time of year, the this is when the vineyard comes alive. Everybody, this is when you start seeing everyone you look forward to seeing. It's like, oh, hey, buddy! Like you start running into people on the beach. Everyone's out there early in the morning. You know, everyone's got their coffee. You know, we'll hang out by you know by the beach, walk out there. Everyone's watching each other up and down. Seeing who's going to catch the first one. You know, all the local tackle shops have a little thing. Who's going to catch the first one? You guys, you know, on the water have who's going to catch the first one. I would usually post it. No, we're, you know, we're, we're into it. Um, you, it's, you just got to wake up early and go. Yeah, it seems like, uh, you know, late at night or right before the sun rises is really when that bite's kind of happening, especially for the early uh, migratory schoolies. And definitely with the holdovers, nighttime is the right time, like they always say. Previous years, it's been when they opened the pond. Last year, it was we decided to try something new and go up to Menemsha, and that's when we got them. And they were 
larger than what you would normally find for the first fish of the year. But they were covered in lice. I think you guys posted that picture last year. But, I mean, it was it was much larger fish. We got a couple, and I was shocked. You know, that's that's why, you know, you don't have to do the same thing every year. Never hurts to go try something different. You know, follow your instincts. You know, if you think there's fish here, if you think there's fish there, go go try it out. You know, just, just, just because somebody caught the first one down at Kwon Tzu last year doesn't mean you have to run out there every day. It just really, it's if you have fun fishing and you want to try a new spot, you want to go do something, go explore, go have some fun, and I guarantee you, you'll be rewarded. Yeah, half of it is the adventure, right? Like, that's why we do it. That's right. I enjoy the process. Like, especially when you learn a new area and then all of a sudden, you know, you get on your first fish there and you, it's that's the reward you're working for. I mean, even if it's just one fish, you know, you learned something new, you learned about the bite, you learned about what they like there. Of course. Of course, yeah. You know, if you haven't seen any bait move into the water in your area already, what do you typically expect to see first? Because I would imagine it's bunker, but, you know, it could be different being that you're a little further out there and into the Atlantic than we are. So what we look for first, or what we typically see first for bait, um, well, we see herring in our herring run. Um, They have um, a live camera in the herring run which pretty much everyone watches. Um, you can find that on the uh, Wampanoag Facebook page, by the way. Every, everyone, I mean, I watch that on my lunch break, just while you know, eating my sandwich to see. You know, I've been seeing glass eels coming through, a couple silver sides, nothing, no, no herring yet. I've been, I've been keeping, keeping an eye out. It's just a matter of time. I mean, I, I guarantee you if I was up there tonight, there's a... But um, but what I would what I would say is uh, uh, we look for the gannets. You know, we go out to South Beach or you you know Kwansu area. You'll see the gannets dive, and you'll you know sometimes you even see whales. So <clears throat> I was taking my dogs for a walk on the beach yesterday, and you could smell fish. You could, yeah, you could tell it like they're out there. They just haven't moved in yet to come in. So I hate to say it, but that might even be a uh, blue fisher smelling. Cause I know a guy who was out on his kayak somewhere around Rhode Island or something. And, uh, and, and he got onto about 35 bluefish in the past, uh, uh, in one day and they were just stacked. So he started throwing soft plastics thinking he found a school, uh, you know, maybe early migrated migratory schoolies. And, uh, it turned out to be a bunch of, you know, racer chopper blues that were, you know, no, no bigger than maybe six pounds at the at the absolute most, but still a fun bite to get on. So they're around, and and the bass are are, are soon to follow. Uh, I talked to a couple of the older guys like Coop and, um, you know, uh, Steve Purcell from the old owner of Larry's Tackle, and they were saying, you know, they could, they've been driving around, they could see signs. Um, I was talking to my shout out to my guys from Nantucket. Um, oh, especially Island X lures here. This is a good talk about bluefish and bass from the surf right here. This is my go-to. But, um, I've been talking to those guys and they've been seeing tons. Like they've been seeing more life than we have. Like in terms of bait or in terms of like early migratory fish? Kind of, uh, they've, they've seen gannets. They've seen birds. You know, I haven't, I haven't gone to Wayscway yet and checked out the point, but um, maybe they're they're just going that way. You know, every year is different. So even though every year is different, based on years past, you know, you kind of expect the schoolies to arrive around, like we were saying, the fourteenth or fifteenth, fifteenth of April, which happens to be the opening day in New York um, for anglers south of the Hudson Bridge. So. You know, I, I, they're getting big fish up to 30, even 40 inches around there right now. So how long do you think until that class of fish starts to kind of move north? So the earliest I've ever caught uh, a fresh fish with lice has been the 14th. I would say we really don't see big fish until June. 
and it was usually on the south side of the island. So, actually, this is this is great. So, what I enjoy is everyone finds the fish on the beach, and then they'll fish for those fish for like three, four weeks. Totally forget about the worm hatch. But I'll go in top water in the pond, have a blast, and then you go back out when everyone starts to go into the pond. And that's when the big fish show up. People will be on the beach catching them, maybe maybe up to 28 inches at first, like when they first show up for a week or two. Then the worm hatch, everyone goes into the pond, fly rods, awesome, top water, jumping minnows, awesome. Every pond on the vineyard's going off. And then while everyone's there, I'll go somewhere else. And that's when you find the big boys right off the bat. That's early June. I have a question to whoever's watching this podcast. Do you think there's resident fish out that stay outside, like around the areas of the vineyard? I have heard old timers say that they don't all leave. You could catch a resident fish outside of a pond or, you know, not in an enclosed area. Yeah, so in the surf. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody, uh, somebody DM us on Instagram or something, and uh, and give us the scoop on that. Yeah, I mean, I I ran into some old timer the other day. He was like, you know, they're not all in the pond. I've had a couple other people say the same thing, so I wonder if anyone's ever caught, you know, a random striper outside the pond or anything. Or outside in the surf. Um, if somebody wanted to, you know, book, book a trip with you or go fishing with you sometime during the season, how can they do that? And what can they expect? Oh, if anyone would like to um, do anything from um, inshore, bass, bonita, bluefish, um, offshore tuna shark, just follow my Instagram, South of the Vineyard, and send me a message, and I'd be happy to fit you into my schedule and work with you. When the bass are here, are you always targeting bass or are you like kind of mixing it up based on whatever you're seeing is biting? Say June, whenever I put the boat in, we usually go out to way squee or middle ground and the squid are, you know, breaking in the surf and the bass are chasing the squid and you're throwing poppers or jumping minnows or, you know, a, a big jig head, kind of, you know, something like this on the bottom. Let it sit there and it's easy. And it's that's the most fun. Squid ink everywhere, fast everywhere, good on the fly. And, and thank you again, Stavros, for, for you know meeting with me and um, hope to see you out there on the water at some point this year, man. Thanks for wearing the on the water hat. Matt, thank you very much for having me. Thank you to everyone from on the water. Um, just want to give a shout out to Coop and the boys at Larry's. And my guys on Nantucket, thank you very much. Tight lines, and I'll talk to you guys soon. It turns out Stavros and a couple of friends got onto the beach the morning of April 14th, and just like he predicted, they got onto their first migratory striped bass of the season. Granted, these are only a few small sea lice, but it's a good sign that migratory schoolies are on their way to the waters around Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard. With schoolies already on the beaches of Martha's Vineyard and the full moon tide coming on Saturday the 16th, this is looking like a real prime window to get on your first migratory bass of the season. I don't know about you, but I'm getting my light tackle surf set up ready, and I'm going to tie on some leader and get out there probably this weekend. That's all the time we have for this week. The migration has gained some steam, and quality fish can be found all throughout New Jersey up into the back bays of Long Island. Right now, there are fish heading east from Montauk Point or working their way up through the East River and into the western Long Island Sound. If you haven't already, sign up for On the Water Striper Cup using the link in the description below. And follow us on social media for more information on the striper migration as the season progresses.